DeVito is best known for playing characters we love to hate, like the cranky cab driver in Taxi, the slimy car salesman in Matilda, and the greedy businessman in Ruthless People. He has perfected the art of making sleazy and egotistical characters strangely sympathetic. Born in 1944 in New Jersey, after finishing school, can you believe Danny actually worked as a hairdresser at his sister's salon? He soon realised he could make more money learning cosmetics, so applied for a makeup course at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. In order to get into the school, he had to perform a monologue, and it was then that he discovered his passion for acting. Technically a dwarf at only 4 foot 11, he was overlooked at castings due to his height. Undeterred, he took to the stage and became good friends with another up-and-coming star, Michael Douglas. During a production of The Shrinking Bride, he met actress Rhea Perlman. They fell in love, were married and now have three children together. And he finally did make it onto the big screen, thanks to Kirk Douglas and Sophia Loren. Yeah, one of the first films I ever did was Scalawag. Kirk uh, directed it and starred in it. My second film was uh, called Lady Liberty. Starred Sophia Loren, and I was in that too. In 1975, Danny worked alongside Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Despite only a small role, his performance stood out. The movie went on to win five Oscars, but Danny didn't let it go to his head. And from that moment on, throughout the years now since 1975, uh, that I'm part more and more part of the film industry, I try to remember that that the work is the most important thing, right. no matter what. Then in 1978, Danny landed his big break in the TV sitcom Taxi, playing cranky New York cabbie Louis De Palma. He reportedly won the role after rudely telling producers at the audition how bad the script was. They thought he'd nailed the character and gave him the job. After five years on Taxi, he took on various supporting roles in terms of endearment, romancing the stone, and its sequel, The Jewel of the Nile. But it was in Wise Guys and Ruthless People that Danny proved he could be the leading man. It's always better, I think, uh, to explore the positive, you know, that's why I love comedy, because it, uh, it seems that uh, it's always better to have the smile on your face than the frown, right. you know, no matter what. We know that. Nobody wants sorrow. Nobody wants tragedy. We all have it. We have it in our lives, in our daily lives, and so many millions of people were suffering for what not, one way or another. And, uh, you know, we're all human beings, and, uh, you know, to dwell on that is, to me, uh, you know, not necessary. After more success in the comedy Tin Men, DeVito needed a new challenge and found it in directing. In his directorial debut, Throw Mama from the Train, he directed himself and Billy Crystal. And despite the wacky humour, he worked hard to keep the story grounded. I like uh, the true, honest characters. I like to explore th those, their, um, uh, see them, find out their stories, but also have an opportunity to stretch the envelope a little, to venture out into, you know, because it is a comedy. I can get a little bit absurd, maybe a little bit sick uh, and sometimes, but always have that ties to the basic reality of the characters. It's a character comedy. One of DeVito's most famous roles, and my favourite of his, was starring as Arnold Schwarzenegger's twin in The Hilarious Twins. Continuing to take turns in front of and behind the camera, he directed The War of the Roses and starred as the ruthless liquidator in other people's money. I think it's a good thing for people to do, to uh, do both in a way because you understand uh, a lot more what the artist is going through, what she or he is doing, you know, and the difficulties and problems and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been very, very rewarding, uh, you know, spiritually and, you know, it's just creatively just wonderful to be able to go back and forth. Danny was the perfect choice to play the evil penguin in Batman Returns. His ugly and disturbing transformation into the repulsive character took a whopping two hours in the makeup chair. Always prepared to go the extra mile for a role, he even refused a stand-in for the scene where the penguin is pelted with rotten food. Yuck! But it was all worth it to Danny, who admits he enjoyed playing the bad guy. He is, without a doubt, one of the most evil characters that I've ever encountered in my life. Keen to show his serious side, Danny took on Jack the Bear, as well as the biographical Hoffa, which he also directed. 
He returned to comedy starring in Renaissance Man and Junior teaming up with Arnie again. Arnold and I, we have a good, uh, you know, uh, we have a good working relationship. We respect each other's work and, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, it comes across in the chemistry that you feel. Next, DeVito starred alongside John Travolta in the gangster comedy Get Shorty and also worked with his wife Rhea Perlman on Matilda, which is based on a story by the dark and twisted Roald Dahl. I'm really passionate about this and I think it's a wonderful story. I love to tell it. I love to put it on the screen. I made this movie for my kids. It was finally a movie that my kids can see. An established, incredibly versatile A-list actor, he was offered and took on a wide range of varied roles. From Tim Burton's alien comedy Mars Attacks to the thriller LA Confidential. But it was Francis Ford Coppola's The Rainmaker that made one of Danny's wishes come true. What attracted me to this film? First of all, you have world-class director, a master, Francis Ford Coppola. I always wanted to work with him. And I read the screenplay, which was uh, brilliantly done. He wrote it. Uh, and uh, the character he wrote for me was like just terrific. So all those elements, you know, forced me into working on The Rainmaker. In the courtroom drama The Rainmaker, Danny played lawyer Deck, who teams up with Matt Damon's Rudy to take on a big insurance company that refuses to pay out. Based on John Grisham's book, the film is more serious than DeVito's previous work. Even though it's very powerful, like kind of themes, it's very funny, there's lots of jokes and, and it's very light in a way because Deck is like, um, I think that's, that was my job in the, in the movie to you know, keep it light and keep it to, you know, because usually John Grisham movies are very, you know, boring. yeah, well, I don't know, I want to say boring, but I mean, they're, they're very serious, you know, and uh, this movie has got the serious stuff, but it's also got, you know, lots of humor. After conquering acting and directing, Danny took on producing, and again he succeeded. His company, Jersey Films, has produced a long list of mega hits, including Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction and Steven Soderbergh's Out of Sight. But his motivation to launch Jersey Films wasn't just to create great movies. The reason I started Jersey was to protect the director, basically, try to use my clout to protect the director. Um, it's very, very difficult for most directors who are starting out, unless they have a track record, so to speak, or they have some kind of clout, to get their vision on the screen. Danny enjoys the challenges of producing and loves to help upcoming directors, giving them the chance to get their ideas onto the big screen. It's fun. It's a good thing. If you do it right and you stay out of the way, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Jersey film successes just kept coming. One of its biggest was the Oscar-winning Erin Brockovich, the powerful true story of a single mother who took on a Californian power company that were polluting the local water supply. Oh, we're, we're, all of us at Jersey Films are very proud of the movie. We especially thank Carla for find, going to the chiropractor. Actually, we have to thank Michael because he nudged yeah, her in the morning. He <laughs> nudged her, her, her he, back he, and threw her back out. She went to the chiropractor. She found Erin Brockovich sitting there, also had her back out. And they got together, and then she came with the story, and Stacy Cher, and Michael, and I, and Carl, we put it all together. I can't believe what that happened? something like this could go on in the United States. Despite finding success behind the scenes, Danny continued acting, taking on a wide range of varied roles. From the comedy drama Man on the Moon, to the thriller Heist, and he teamed up again with Tim Burton for the fantasy Big Fish. Well, Danny, you know, I've worked with him a few times, and he's just, he's just got such a great spirit, you know? I think because he's done it all, you know, he's acted, directed, produced, so he, he knows what everything's all about. So, therefore, he kind of comes into it with a great spirit, and, uh, you know, I mean, he can always become a circus performer, I guess, if he <laughs> wants to fall back on something. He had that, you know, he had the tent riveted, you know, the audience, uh, I think enjoyed him as a ringmaster. <laughs> Continuing to improve his skills behind the camera, Danny teamed up with Robin Williams in Death to Smoochie. Williams was hilarious as the kids' TV star who's fired from his job and seeks revenge on his replacement. And as DeVito discovered, getting a great performance out of Robin isn't easy. His wife, Marcia, called me. She says, you know the thing about the finger? I said, I don't know. No. What the hell are you talking about? You know, but they do give you a glove, and they supply them. So just before he goes on, 
You stick the f and you jam it up his ass. Danny just couldn't turn down a quirky character, playing a man living with obsessive compulsive disorder in Noble Sun. Wanting to keep the character grounded in reality, DeVito drew from his own personality for the role. I guess there are little things in all of us that we have this OCD, you know. There may be minor little things. That's the idea, you know, being an actor, because you like kind of find that thing that you relate to in there and then try to bring it up to the top of the color wheel. It's like if you think of it as like, you know, like, a, you know, except for like Meryl Streep, of course. She just, all she has to do is put on a nun's habit and she can be. <laughs> a veteran who's been in the business for over 40 years, Danny is still as passionate about filmmaking today as he was when he first started in showbiz. The whole idea is that you have to get out and make movies. That's why we're here. That's why you all are here supporting it. And uh, it's just a great art. Danny DeVito has gone from being that short, funny guy to becoming one of Hollywood's most talented and powerful filmmakers. He's a passionate storyteller who really understands how to create unusual and fascinating characters that stay with us long after a film ends. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.